بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلی آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد ایو الاحباب cruelty and the opposite which is the purity of the heart are things we need to be concerned with as believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I wanted to read from Al-Fawaid which is a collection of wise sayings by Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyum rahimahullah ta'ala which is imperative for us to reflect, of, reflect upon as he was a doctor of the heart rahimahullah and may Allah have mercy upon all the ulama, the scholars of Ahl Sunnah, in the past up until this day. Ayyul Ahbab, Ibn al-Qayyum mentioned about cruelty and purity of the heart. He said, there is no harder punishment, there is no harder punishment than when the servant has a cruel heart and moves away from Allah. Hellfire was created to melt such cruel hearts. The most remote heart from Allah is the cruel one. If the heart was cruel, the eye will never shed tears. Cruelty of the heart is caused by increasing four things over and above one's needs, meaning excessive food, sleep, talk, and socializing. When the body is sick, food and drink is no use to it. Likewise, when the heart is ill because of desires, advice is useless. Ayyul Ahbab, let's reflect on this statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyum. He said that there is no harder punishment than when the servant has a cruel heart and moves away from Allah. So letting us know that the more we move away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more inclination we have to cruelty. And that, of course, the person who is already cruel, who has this this anger and has this hatred and has this dislike and this hasid, this envy towards others and cruelty is not merciful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation, then this person is further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And then, Shaykh al-Islam, he mentioned that hellfire was created to melt such cruel hearts, letting us know the cruel heart is like a solid uh, sealed structure. We can make a likeness that it is like a solid sealed structure hard, harsh structure. This is the heart of the person that's cruel. And that what's going to break them down, if they're not broken down in this life, then for sure in the next life, the hellfire will melt that cruel, cruel heart. Melt it and break it down. And the more that we have cruelty, that there's a relationship, as Sheikh al-Islam mentioned, he said the most remote heart from Allah is the cruel one. So the heart that's the furthest away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when we talk about ibadah in worship, we're talking about taqarrab Allah. When they mention taqarrab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this means those actions, those statements, those acts of iman that will bring you closer to Allah. Azza wa Jal. So the cruel person is harder, is further from Allah Azza wa Jal. And some of the things that makes a person that increases their heart in cruelty and increases them in hardness of the heart is being excessive in your food, excessive in your sleep, and excessive in your speech, and excessive in socializing, especially if you socialize in gatherings where there is little of no or no benefit. Then he said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, whoever wants to purify his heart must prefer Allah over and above his own desires. He also said, the hearts that are attached to desires are far away from Allah, according to the amount of attachment. The hearts are the vessels that hold the knowledge of the truth. And the most beloved to him is the one that is most tender, firm, and pure. They busied their hearts with this worldly life. And if they had busied themselves with Allah, and the hereafter, they would think about his words and verses and would have returned to them with the most precious wisdom and benefits. Ayyul Ahbab, look at this. So these are the ways in which a person who is cruel, they distance themselves from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and distance themselves from iman and khair because they busy themselves with the life of this world. 
Then he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, if the heart was fed by remembering Allah, again, we've mentioned countless times, soul food. If the heart was fed by remembering Allah, became satisfied by thinking about Allah, and purified from evil and desires, it would see wonders and be inspired with wisdom. Not everyone among those who claim to have acquired knowledge and wisdom is from their people. The people of knowledge and wisdom are those who revive their hearts by overcoming their desires. But those who control their hearts and revive their desires, knowledge and wisdom are just words on their tongues. May Allah protect us from not practicing the knowledge that he blesses us with. Then he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, your heart will be ruined from feeling secure and being careless and will grow by remembering Allah and being pious. So piety and dhikr, remembering Allah often, are things that are going to help, your, uh, help you find security and peacefulness in your heart. If the hearts neglect the tables and ple the pleasures of this worldly life, they will sit at the tables of the hereafter among the people who are invited to this. But if they are satisfied with the tables of this worldly life, meaning the pleasures of this worldly life, they will miss the others. So meaning that the more satisfied you are with this worldly life of being comfort and striving to attain uh, this dunya, this worldly life in, in the zina of the dunya, then this will be, could be at the expense of your akhirah. It doesn't mean that we have to throw away worldly life. So we have to understand the context of what Shaykh al-Islam is saying here. He's not saying, because as, as the ulama have mentioned, that zuhud is, is, not, is not that you just get rid of your worldly possessions, no, or that you have one thaw or that you're dirty or something like this, no. But zuhud or real asceticism is that you don't have love, your, world, your, your love is not attached to this worldly life, meaning you're not attached to having to marry four wives necessarily. You're not attached in love and desire to have all the wealth, but you want those things to help you be obedient to Allah. Shaykh al-Islam then said, longing for Allah in the meeting with him is like a breeze that blows through the heart and removes the blaze of this worldly life. And then he said, the heart will rest and relief and feel relief if it is settled with Allah and it will worry and be anxious if it is settled with people. It is as impossible for the love for Allah to enter the heart that is full of love for this worldly life as it is for a camel to pass through the eye of the needle. And this is also uh, witnessed in the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that. That the more you love this dunya for the one who's wealthy and the one who strives for wealth instead of strives for the akhirah, then this person, it's harder for them to enter the par uh, paradise because they're so attached to this world. If Allah loves his servant, he makes him for himself, chooses him for his love, and selects him to worship him. Allah will let his servant's tongue be busy in remembering him, and his limbs will be busy serving him. The heart gets sick as the body does, and its cure is in asking for forgiveness and protection. It also becomes rusty like a mirror does, and it is polished by remembering Allah. The heart can also be naked like the body and can lose its dress and decoration, which is piety. It can feel hunger or hungry and thirst like the body does. And its nourishment is knowledge, love, trust, and offering service to Allah. This is beautiful wisdom from Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim. And let's reflect on the last statement that he said. He said, the heart gets sick as the body does. And the Prophet wasallam said, in the fijizid, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily, the body, verily in the body is a morsel of flesh. If it is healthy, then the whole body is healthy. If it is sick, then the whole body is sick. Verily, it's the heart. So Ibn al-Qayyum, rahimahullah ta'ala, when he said, the heart gets sick as the body does, and its cure is as is in seeking forgiveness and protection, letting us know that when we seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a way of strengthening our heart, humbling yourself, seeking the protection and support of your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because no one can help you. If you have a problem, I can't help you. I can help you as much as I can, but that's limited. Your parents can help you as much as they can, but it's limited. Your government, whoever, can help you as much as they can, 
but it's limited. Because really the true help comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why when we have isti'ana, when it's to the level of ibadah, that this, does, this is only to Allah. When we have real tawakkul, this is only to Allah. The true tawakkul, haqiqi, when you really rely on someone in totality, giving all of your affairs up, it's only to Allah Azza wa Jal that you put that, that level of trust, that it becomes an act of worship. Because all worship goes to Allah Azza wa Jal. And these things will help you to remove some of the sickness from your heart. And as he says, it also becomes, meaning the heart, rusty like a mirror does. And it is polished by remembering Allah. Make dhikr to Allah Azza wa Jal much and feed your heart uh, the soul food, which is reading the Quran, having love and tawakkul and 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 being and doing ibadah to Allah Azza wa Jal. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. May Allah guide us all with ikhlas, with the bat, and bless uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim with Jannah to Fardos and all of the ulama that have preceded us from Ahl al-Sunnati wal-Jama'ah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.